Quite a good scene, isn't it? One man crazy, three very sane spectators. and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. This is the third video in my church clock repair series and in this video we're going to put the movement back together, test run it, fix the case. The case got all kinds of issues and hang it on the wall and see how it looks as a finished project. Let's get going. That's it for the repairs to the movement. Now I can do a final assembly and we can see how it runs. First thing we want to do is put the main spring back on the main wheel and you got to make sure the springs oriented the right way. It goes on that way so the wheel goes on like that and then we have to engage that little pin into the tab in the spring. The key helps to do that. Sometimes these are a bugger to get aligned properly. Oh, come on, you get in there. I know you go on that way. Such are the joys of clock repair. Dental picks are very handy to have. The curl of the spring in the very middle needs to match the diameter of the arbor perfectly to lock on to that post that sticks out. Now we can start putting this back together. Drag out all my other wheels here. I've done this enough times by now to know the wheels by heart. Which one goes where? Ah! Put the plate on. Start lining everything up. Hopefully, unlike the MD transmission, I didn't forget anything. You got to get in there too. And then finally, the verge goes on. I can wind this up a little bit to take some tension off of the keeper. Old myth that's not true, winding a clock too tight won't make it stop. It has nothing to do with that. I'm not sure where that came from. There goes the keeper. Now I should have a tick-tock clock. Next we want to adjust this escapement, the relationship of the verge to the escapement gear or wheel. We'll stop running you. See how if I let this go I get a little skip there I get a lot of movement and you want to adjust that so that when this side of the verge clears the escapement or clears the escape wheel that the other pallet has engaged and the way you do that is by moving this, tilting it down till you get the right engagement. And these don't move so easy because they don't get adjusted very often. See, I went too far there, and now the verge won't clear both teeth. So we gotta come back up a little bit. That's as good as I'm gonna get it. It's just clearing that tooth. See how it rocks back and forth? Just clear and then it can start coming back down. So that's where I want it to be. And she wants to run. <laughs> I like that. Now we can oil it up and I use these little pens. Clocks need very, very little oil. Like that is plenty, a drop. Only on the pivots. Never ever oil the gears or else you're gonna wind up with a clock that won't run. People try that as kind of a last ditch effort to get their clock to run and that's probably about the worst thing you can do. The little well in the pivot is designed to hold the oil. Clocks should be re-oiled about once every five years or so is what I've learned anyway. People may disagree with that. 
Too much oil just attracts dirt and then you get sludge wandering around in the pivots and the pivots holes and then you got problems. Just tighten up these tapered pins that hold everything together here. And put the movement back in the case. You can put the pendulum rod back on. This is funky because it goes up behind the movement and hangs from above the movement. I've never worked on another clock that was this way. And I think I'll go ahead and put the hands back on it too. Here's the hour hand. This is the minute hand. Another tapered pin to hold them in. Put the pendulum bob on. You probably can't hear it, but the beat is syncopated on the tick-tock. So in order to fix that, you just tilt the clock till it evens out. And there it is, running again. It runs nice, it's got a nice long swing to the pendulum. I set it to the current time, I'm gonna let it run overnight and I gotta do a lot of work on the case tomorrow. It's really in sad shape. It's the next day and the clock ran great all night, running strongly, even keeping good time. Now it's time to fix the case. I apologize for the noise, it's the workshop heater. It's cold outside. The face has got some serious problems. I like the patina of this old paper face, so I don't want to damage that, but it's loose. And I believe the way that it used to be fastened was there were some tin tabs soldered onto the edges of this brass that the ring is made out of and it trapped the tin back of it in. That's the only way they could put a paper face in without burning the paper. You know, you can't solder directly to this or the paper would burn because it slipped in behind this. So what I'm going to do is solder in some new tabs to hold this securely, just like it was originally made. It took me a while to figure out how I'm going to do this, but I trapped it in a vise here very gently to hold the paper face back and then I've cleaned off a piece of the brass and I cut some little pieces of tin. I can't even hold them. Solder them right on there with the paper still held out. Put some flux on this and I'm using silver solder. I need three hands. Actually I have a better plan. <laughs> Plan B is to form this piece of tin that I cut so that it fits in this recess here and that'll hold it in while I'm soldering it. Some hundred year old dust burning out of there. It smells wonderful. And here's what I wound up with. I've got two tabs, silver soldered on, and then they just bend over like this and trap that face in there and I didn't do any damage to the paper face. This is actually where it was soldered up years ago, I guess, and they didn't separate the paper and it burned the paper some. I made sure not to do that again. The next job is to fix this case and it's got its own serious issues. The first issue is that this latch doesn't work anymore. It's supposed to spring back in like this and catch this steel wire that's on the cover to latch it closed. And with this clock, I'm particularly concerned that the latch doesn't work and it hangs open because it's only got this one hinge here and this is quite heavy for the one hinge and the next issue that's there's very old glazing putty going around the inside here to hold the glass in and some of it's crumbled out and I want to make sure that the glass doesn't wind up falling out of this thing so the first thing I'm going to do is actually unscrew this hinge so that I can take the cover off of it in order to access this latch and it's screwed way down in there, I gotta take this support off that supports the clock face. And I wanna make sure I put it back in the same spot, so I'm just gonna mark a line on the inside edge of it, cause these holes have gotta line up for the face. And this should, it's just nailed in from the back, so it should work off with a little care. And a putty knife. Should be the last one. Yep. Oh look, they glued it as well. That glue failed long ago. Here's that latch and it is really janky. Somebody put a nail in there to try and hold it straight and there's a screw that's loose down there and what a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. If I can get at the screw. You need to come out. I'll 
I'll bet I have more resolve than you do, even though you're older than me. There we go. That's the latch. I gotta re or bend it so that it springs correctly, and then find a secure way to fasten it back on so it doesn't loosen up again. The bending part's pretty easy. I think I can handle that. And then I'm gonna commit blasphemy in the purest clock repair world. I'm actually gonna use a Phillips head brass screw longer than what was in there so I get a better tight connection with that. And then to keep this from rotating, because there's only one screw on it down there, I'm going to put a finish nail in through this hole to stabilize it so it can still move this way but it won't move that way. I'm going to use an old carpenter's trick to keep wood from splitting and that's to cut a blood end on the finish nail like that. I was just checking out the back here and I got to fix this hanger but I saw something that I hadn't noticed before. That says five foot 12,000 or 12,009, but this here seems to be a repair mark, and I can't make out the name, but it says 3332, 1932, I assume. It's not uncommon for when somebody repairs a clock for them to leave their name and the date on it, so it's a record for anybody else that goes in. Now for the lid to make sure, or the lid, the door, <laughs> to make sure that the glass just doesn't inadvertently fall out. I'm taking some wire nails, small wire nails, and just pushing them in around the glazing here. It doesn't have to be tight to the glazing, it's just insurance. I don't want them to be losing this. Like I said, these are just a little bit of insurance in case this rest of this glazing putty comes out. I'm not in the mood to reglaze this whole thing. That's kind of a big job to use putty glazing, so we'll leave it this way. And put the door back on. Well, repairs are all done, hopefully. Check out how my latch works. Yeah, that's good and tight now. Now we can take it back in the house and put everything together for final, final testing. You know, I was going to put the movement back in here, but then I happened to think of something. An obligation, maybe that I should add my name to the back of the clock and the date that I rebuilt it. There. Okay, let's get this back together. There's the movement. And the pendulum rod. Then we'll go ahead and hang it on the wall. Put the pendulum in. Don't stop. You'll get your chance. Then the clock face. Line everything up here. In there. Next, the hands. Turn it around to the correct time. Make sure the hour and minute hand clear each other all right. The hands are large enough on this clock where you can actually see the minute hand move every tick. And that's it. We have one nice sounding, nice running clock. Something to be proud of. I'm glad this job's done. It took me the better part of three days to bring this clock back to life. You may wonder how I learned how to do this. I, just the same way I've learned a lot of things. I bought some old clocks and I started trying my hand at fixing them. I made various mistakes. I read books. I looked at YouTube videos. I talked to some professional clock restorers that went to the auctions I went to and just gradually picked up the knowledge. You can learn anything if you put your mind to it. I'll be back with MD and farm videos now that this project's done. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.